a little side project for the winter too it won't take much uh, last ride of the season on the kx 112 i wiped out and i bent the handlebars up pretty good you can see there you know all the paint's chipping off because the bar is real bent and i could straighten them out but it's not going to last it's not going to be proper so i'm going to go with some upgraded bars not sure if i'm going to go with seven eighth or the one and it one and an eighth fat bars yet but uh i'll update you when i get these new bars on well summer's almost here so it's time to finally fix the kx ordered parts slowly throughout the winter here and finally they've all showed up show you what i got got a uh secondary rad that'll mount on the left side new rad hoses for that new pipe Makes it a clear, good clearance, you know. Fat bars, because I bent mine. You can see them right here. You can see they're all bent up there. Kind of shitty. Whatever. New fat bars. Hopefully that helps that. Fat bar mounts from Renthal. Digital de temperature gauge. That'll be awesome. Some bark busters, because all the single track riding we do, always hitting my hands on the trees. New grips for the new handlebars and some engine ice cool i'm gonna try this stuff out i like to run these two strokes as cool as possible so we'll see what this does i don't know worth a try i guess all right pulled the bike out of storage i don't know what i'm gonna start with first probably something easy to warm up with something like the handlebars and then work my way to the harder stuff like the carburetor and the radiator and all that kind of fun stuff Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut the old grip off because I'm going to be re ew, reusing this twist throttle. See how this goes. Try not to cut myself too badly. Probably glued on there somewhat. Put that down there. Oh yeah, that's on there. I'll uh, I'll update you guys when I get it off, or maybe do a time lapse of me struggling here. Well, it's the next day. I almost got the grip off. This is insane. I'm having to shave it off because it's basically welded to the uh, twist grip there. You can see all the parts, parts of it on the ground. I've never encountered anything like this, to be honest. It's super glued on there. I'm having to emery cloth and brake clean and WD-40 to get, like, it's insane. But uh, hopefully this isn't the easiest part of the job, because if, uh, if it is, the rest of this dirt bike's going to go horribly. Well, I got the fat bars mounted with the new clamps. Got the new grips on there. Didn't glue them on. I just put them on with some soap and water. They should stay on there pretty decently. That's usually what I do. Just getting everything kind of put back on got the kill switch and this you know and and then it's on to the bark busters from there i guess well i'm done the handlebar install it all went pretty smoothly uh got these uh pro taper pillow top grips they call them that's what i ended up going with i had these arc flip out levers before don't mind that falling off had those on both sides I got these Bark Buster, Bark Busters Jet. I don't know if that's the manufacturer, the model number anyways. Got those, they fit pretty good. They're made for these fat bars. If you're wondering what fat bars I put on this KX112, the Renthal RC Mini 85cc. I think the number's 671. They fit on there pretty nice. You know, they're a little skinnier for these mini bikes. They're not a full-size bike, so. If you're wondering where I'm running the settings on my handlebars, I guess this is where it is. There's no real, uh, you know, like center mark on these Renthal mounts, but I'm kind of running at rate. A little bit, little bit tilted back, maybe. Hard to say. Uh, I don't know if zero is where you're supposed to start, or if two and a half is where you're supposed to start, you know, for the middle. I don't know, but that's where I'm running it. I'm going to start with pulling the plastics and the seat off, and then we'll see what we're dealing with here. Rad's still a bit dirty from last year, so I'm going to try to take that apart here and clean all the shit out. Pretty easy. One bolt. There probably should have been... No, I guess there was two. One was in the plastics, and then one was... You know, there's one here, one there. 
yeah, that's a quick little easy thing to do. Really help your cooling if it's all plugged up from all the single track riding if you do a lot like me. So here's the new rad. I believe it'll mount up kind of where this black uh, black piece and the little CDI box or whatever you want to call that thing where that all was. So it'll go in its place. There's a little place for that box and a little brace that comes with it. I'll have to take the exhaust off and I already have the little CDI box taken out. But while I have this exhaust off, I might as well take the fuel tank and take the carb off and do that because I'll have pretty good clearance. Well, quick little update. The carb is still in there, but the exhaust is off all the plastics. Just got to take this black little piece off here and the carb and then I can kind of start assembling, hopefully. If you're wondering about this dual radiator kit, it's made by Bud Racing. Uh, it comes with the radiator, the hoses, and the uh, pipe to clear the radiator. The pipe's actually made by HGS out of Holland. You can see the little tag there. KX85, 100, and 112 are all the same. But it's a quite, quite the difference in shape. You can see the stock one kind of comes out, does over a 90 degree bend, comes over straight, and then kind of a ni straight 90 up to another 90. This one does a nice curvy 180 up to a straight kind of big section, and then just kind of tapers off kind of on a 45. Hopefully it flows a little better and makes a little bit more power. Definitely looks better. So I got the old carb out. Came out really easy. Uh, if you guys are wondering how to get the carbs out easy on these bikes, you pull the tank. It's one bolt and then this little strap thingy. Then you take the two screws off the top of the carb. Easy enough, right? And it pulls out of this hole. Boom. Easy. Uh, take that boot clamp and that boot clamp off and then I always pull this boot and pull it back behind the frame on this KX 100, 112, 85, whatever. And it holds it there just perfectly. And then you got a lot of room to pull your old carb out, put your new one in, and what, what have you. No, I won't damage the boot. It's rubber. It's pretty flexible. So, yeah, that's the easy way that I've always done it. There's the old carb and the new carb side by side. I'm replacing it with Electron Villatron Mini. Some people seem to love these Electrons and other people seem to hate them. So... I love controversy, so I bought one. We'll see how it does. I like the idea of uh, no jets that you can just pop the top and adjust the metering rod that way. And then it's also got the uh, power jet adjustment right, to, right there for the top end. So if you are going to, you know, lean it out in the dunes, you can adjust that on the fly and at least uh, keep you from blowing up sort of thing. So I'm going to install it and see how it goes. Well, I got the Billitron installed, other than the fuel line, I just gotta hook that up when I get the tank back on, but it all went pretty smoothly. I had to chop the end of the throttle cable down just a tiny, tiny bit, because it wouldn't fit into the slide, but I just filed it down with a little tiny file there, and it didn't take long, and yeah, I got just a little bit of free play like you're supposed to have, and... It actuates nicely. My grips are going to be completely black by the time I finally ride this thing because my hands are always dirty working on this stupid thing. That's kind of annoying, but... One thing I never really took notice of until now is how wimpy this radiator is mounted on here. Like, I know they're supposed to be rubber mounted and all, but that's pretty wimpy. I'm going to have to get some sort of a brace or something to make it a little stronger because, Jesus Christ, I'm going to snap that thing off one of these days. Well, I got the new rad mounted in there, kind of. You can see where the CDI box mounts up. You can see this is, there'll be some plastics that'll mount there, and that'll kind of hold it on there. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It went on pretty easy. They didn't sound, send mounting hardware. Like, I had to find some old bolts from a different machine for there. So, no hose clamps either, so I'm going to have to reuse all my old ones and then find two new ones but that's kind of disappointing i thought they would have for sure sent all the hardware i see they didn't send new uh new o-rings for the pipe i'll have to reuse that and reuse that little gasket down there yeah yeah i thought for sure they'd send all new stuff but it wasn't really that expensive so i'm not too too surprised so i was able to use this uh factory black shroud that they had in here uh it really didn't do anything from factory. It was more just for looks, I think. But I kind of got it to work. I just had to cut uh, here and here. I had to cut this last fin because I would have either had to drill 
holes in this aluminum piece for these little uh, tabs to go through. But instead of doing that, I just cut the uh, last fin of the shroud off and then JB welded it back on just slightly further back and now it fits a lot better. So just waiting for that to dry and I'm gonna start uh, putting the hoses on, I think. We'll see how that goes. I got a trail tech digital temperature gauge with the uh, hose adapter here. I'm gonna put that all together and hopefully mount this on my bars and that'll be way better than uh, not knowing the temperature. Well, I got the hoses all on. Just missing one hose clamp here. I'll have to get that another day, but looks pretty killer. I uh, had to hack up the hose, which is a shame, these custom hoses, but I added my digital thermometer thing there. So I'll run the wire up to the handlebars and route that up nicely. And yeah, it all went pretty smoothly. I see it gets pretty congested around the spark plug here with all the hoses, but whatever. We'll see, uh, see how that does. Update you at the end of the season if there was any issues with that, I guess. But yeah, it looks awesome. Looks like a full-size bike as far as cooling goes now. So the dirt bike project's finished for the day. Stickered her up a bit. I've never put stickers on any of my machines, so I changed it up this time. But yeah, it looks good. Everything went together pretty good. Hoses get a bit tight there. I had to cut a bit off of here and push it in. I could probably do a bit more and that would get rid of that hose hitting, but whatever. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Yeah, everything looks good. Uh, I'm missing the four screws for my Barkbuster things here. I'm trying to get some free ones from Barkbuster. We'll see how that goes. If not, I could just go to the hardware store and buy some. You can see my temperature gauge there. Looks good. Let's see what the pipe looks like, you know. I think it's actually, out of all the KX100 pipes I've seen, it's probably the best shaped one it almost looks like a 125 pipe you know not quite but doesn't quite have that 90 degree old school bend that some of the uh, other ones do got the electron in there yeah can't wait to fire it up should be a few more weeks though because there's still a lot of snow even though it's april unfortunately